That father is mad, so we've got to get away fast. It is Mad Father speedrun time here. We're going to be doing the bad ending, skipping the prologue. And uh, hopefully get through here in about 30 minutes. Uh, welcome to the video, and we're going to start in by grabbing our pet snowball and skipping a nice flashback here. This flashback will play normally. You can't skip it. You just mash through some dialogue and... Instead of showing you that, we're just going to keep on going. Uh, so this is a nice little RPG maker horror game, and uh, yeah, it's got some charm to it, some loudness to it. I apologize for that. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to go and collect items and uh, yeah, figure out what's going on in this house. So we're going to ignore that gem ju that just fell down and head across upstairs here into the archives. The archive key is what we picked up there before from the Screaming Woman room. And uh, yeah, we're going to investigate some notes to figure out how we can move along in the game. Uh, now we're, our character is completely oblivious to the, uh, well, we'll say, curiosities of her father. And that is what the whole game is about, is uncovering this mystery and... Uh, while also being revealed to some of the past uh, individuals that lived in this place, along with how she grew up and a few things along the way. It's a nice little title. Definitely recommend checking it out. Here's a uh, flashback of someone in her screaming something fierce about trying to come to the realizations of what uh, is being shown to her about her father. So we're going to skip the pendant that she drops and just head on out. We're going to head back to that room with the screaming woman in it, the uh, bedroom here, and we're going to use the safe. Now, normally you would need to figure this out, but since this is a speed run, we can skip all that. It's 4280 every time. You just simply need to collect information from across the house to find those numbers normally. It's like the number of chairs in a room, number of plants in a room, stuff like that. So again, uh, after another little bit of a skip here of a flashback, we're going to head on out and make our first venture down the stairs. Here we go into the reception room. We want to walk across the fireplace here that triggers this sound of crying that we uh, can't quite take care of yet, but it will trigger this chair to mysteriously push out. Let's go ahead and push it with this... Very, uh, old chair uh, push sound effect. <laughs> and uh, we're going to grab the old key. Now here, be prepared for QTEs. That's right, QTEs in this game. It's okay if you mess one of these up. However, if you mess up too much, that uh, white bar, uh, yeah, we'll keep getting lower and you could run out of time and be killed. So don't do that. Um, after surviving that, step back and that'll fall down and use the old key you just picked up and you're, we're going to get a, a dagger. However, this is not a weapon. Or at least to be used as a weapon anyway. Instead, we're going to leave the reception room and head over to the clothing room. Uh, if these two spawn in, just try to run around them. Your health respawns, I believe it's every room you go into. Like, once you escape immediate danger, you'll be back at full health is kind of how it works. Uh, we're going to use the dagger on that dress there to get a cloth, though, which will come in use here in just a moment. And we're going to head up into the kitchen now, reveal, move this uh, tarp here, and open the hatch to head on down to this underground area. Thankfully, the lamp is one of the items we've got, and another item we got is our trusty rabbit snowball. Ooh, yes, we there is Snowball Game Boy here. Snowball's going to grab the wire for us. And we're going to head right back out. Unfortunately, that's it for Snowball in the game, but given how things play out in this game, that might be for the best. <laughs> so with the cloth, the wire, and now a piece of wood, which you are going to grab right there, we have the means. Just use any of the items in your inventory, and you will have... A torch. Now we need to soak the torch in oil, so we're going to do that right in front of that red pot there. And we're going to head out and head back to the reception room where that fireplace was. And just like that, we'll have a lit torch.
If you're curious of how long a typical playthrough of this game would take, I would say roughly between two to three hours if you want to get the uh, 100% playthrough completed. And uh, yeah, we get that down to, like I said, around 30 minutes in this uh, playthrough. A lot of the time is dedicated to, you know, reading all the text and everything like that. Overall, a fairly small game, but uh, I think it gets a lot of mileage out of what it does offer. So the glass of eyes will drop there. We're going to pick those up and head into the laboratory. Where we're going to see uh, the assistant. Um, yes, assistant of her father. And then our first appearance of Agent 47. Kind of in persona form. He kind of has a persona look to him with the Agent 47 style. Uh, yeah, his mysteries will be revealed a little later. But he does open this door for us for now. And um, yeah, nice cutscene with mother and father. Mother is unfortunately already uh, long since passed. But uh, yeah, father is. Well, he's a little disturbed. Again, skipping dialogue will be a big part of this, and if you are indeed trying to speedrun it, mashing through the text is something you'll want to get used to. A little note on the uh, presentation of the game here. You'll notice there's kind of a, a bit of noise on screen. There is a filter to turn said noise off, if you would choose to. I left it on. There are other attempts in this that I turned it off. It's just, yeah, that's just a preference thing. So do you do need to talk to the girl there by the gate, observe her anyway, before going forward? And uh, yeah, climb up here. We're going to push this down and we're going to find a, a very useful tool, the mini chainsaw. A cutscene plays here that shows uh, shows our character, you know, playing with it casually, which you know may raise a few questions. But um, for now, it's just a useful tool for us. For now. It allows us to cut through any wood barricades and such, uh, like that one right there. It's going to let us head on out. We get the uh, the flame retardants there, too. That'll be uh, used to put out that fire that was so helpful before to light our torch. So we're going to make our way back into the house, head over to the reception room again. And we're going to, uh, again, hear the cries. But what's good for us is those cries are from the girl that was trapped in the cell. So when we look into the fireplace, we're going to move this and we can drop the glass of eyeballs down, which will shatter the glass and give her some new eyes. I'm not exactly sure how this works out, but yeah, we just kind of roll with it in this game. So now we're going to head back into the kitchen and we're back out the back door. Don't worry, that knife cannot kill you randomly. And uh, yeah, we're going to head on back down the ladder and just backtrack to the where the girl was uh, hidden away here. Eyes now back in place. I'm not sure that's exactly how things work, but again... In this game, you just kind of roll with it. Especially since she's, you know, kind of a spirit of a uh, former uh, occupant. Uh, don't head back like I did. That was a mistake because I'm terrible at this run, apparently. But we're going to keep going forward. We're going to enter the looping passageway here. So we're after the fourth time here of going through here, uh, this spirit will spawn in who really she just wants to see the outside. So the idea is you'll want to head back towards the backyard to uh, you know help her achieve this. So we're going to start walking and then something will happen. A flashback will happen, which uh, we'll go ahead and skip past here in just a moment. It basically will fill in some story stuff and again, help our character realize more that our father is indeed mad. But yes, after this, yeah, you see the 
You'll see the timer just jump randomly almost a minute there. <laughs> yeah, now we can clear the looping passage with her uh, at ease, at peace, at rest, however you want to put it. And uh, head up here to this hidden passage to the right. We're going to go ahead and open this and then cut open this box here to get the forceps. And then we're going to leave. Yeah, finding that hidden door can be a little tricky uh, if you don't know it's there. But the statue is pointing that way. So again, use the chainsaw in this room here. We're going to use the forceps to grab this key out of the toilet. And then we have to wash the key off. So you can imagine what that toilet uh, shape was. But just mash it. Don't try to use the key out of your inventory like I did there. That was me being, again, bad at this speed run. But uh, after the, you obtain the key, we're going to head on back up and open up this cell door here. And head on through this opening in the back of the wall. Again, another spirit. But this one's taken out by a doll. Yes, these dolls do not mess around. <laughs> so through here, you need to be very particular of where you walk. Walk around the puddles here. Walk across here at the front so that way you don't step on the glass. Avoid the rats. Avoid the cracks and everything in the ground. Anything that could make noise. And thankfully, the dolls kind of will attack each other. So here you'll want to go to this crack in the ground and use your chainsaw to attract the sound. And uh, have the doll break that open after you do the QTE so you can get a lever. And a nice thing is the game will teleport you back to the entrance automatically. That wasn't a cut or anything. That is just generosity from Madfather. And so we're going to head back to the left here into this room with the red carpeting and use the lever we just obtained to open this door so we can proceed onward. Right, into this, uh, this church area. Makes you wonder how the depths of this mansion a bit. We're going to grab the sausage here, using our chainsaw yet again, and we're going to cook it. However, we're not going to do anything with it just yet. It will come into play soon, though. Instead, we're going to try to proceed onward, and this guy is going to come out and try to strangle us. So again, QTEs here, same deal as before. You know, just do your best not to make a mistake. If you're trying to speed run, obviously go as quick as you can, but definitely don't make a mistake. Mistake isn't an insta kill again, but yeah, again, it's just something you want to avoid if you can. This, you know, takes time. And so after uh, being uh, rescued by uh, this individual here, we're going to be back in the church. And after a brief exchange, he's not going to have a lot of. Uh, a lot of luck here because, well, here comes Maria again. And with a heck of a toss bite there, by the way. Um, You know, that that was straight up Bill the Butcher from Gangs of New York, if you've seen it. Um, Quite the throw <laughs> to take him out. Sad as we may be, though, we must move on and continue onward. Ultimately, you'll find our character can be kind of cold in certain situations, and you'll also notice there's a boy now sitting at that table. So we're going to go and grab the sausage that we cooked before. It was just sitting there, and we're going to talk to him as he is indeed as so hungry. Really, the only thing he can really focus on at the immediate moment, and... Uh, he chows down, eating the uh, the sausage we prepared, and for our efforts, will give us the napkin, which may not seem like a fair trade-off for, you know, cooked sausage, but eh, it is an item we will need to complete the game. As it may seem like that's actually a side quest you could skip, there are several throughout here we do skip, but... So we're going to go check the gate. Once again, the uh, the ghost is going to come after us. Just come up here and mash. Uh, whether you're a controller or a keyboard here as much as you can, you'll bust through there. And we're going to get to the first of the gimmick rooms. So this one, we need to match the room on the right with the one on the left. So we're going to take 
some of the flowers from the bouquet first. Come into this back room, cut off the doll head. And now we're going to the right side. Use the bouquet. Push the statue to the left so that matches. Come over here. Enter your menu at the right spot, not a scrub like me. And use your doll head here. So that's all matched. We're going to grab the spear out of this hand here. Put it into the knight's hand. Head over to this right pillar to get the crack with our chainsaw. And then stand right there. And that's a perfect match. And there you go. That's gimmick room number one. And here comes gimmick room number two. This one, you need to use clues that are provided for you to basically create what is being said in the excerpt on screen. So you push the baby into the bed. Then we're going to pick up the corpses on the ground and put them into the uh, the dresser. So there's two right here. And then it mentions that um, mother being out uh, when you hide them. So we're going to push mother out the front door. And there's that room complete. The next one here, we need to go ahead and grab the knife off of the uh, dresser here and hand it to the uh, individual. Use the napkin to rub mother's face. And uh, yeah, it's uh, kind of a dark game. It may not seem like it. It may seem a little cutesy, but yeah, it's a dark game. Next room, we're just going to cut off the head there. That's all we need to do. And that is the end of gimmick room number two. After passing through here, we're going to uh, just have a random head fall in front of us. And I love how casually she just kind of hops right over it there. And so now we're going to be uh, treated to a cutscene, And this one's short enough, I just leave in. I love the art style of this game. I think it looks very good. I mentioned that we aren't going to use the chainsaw as a weapon. Well, technically we won't be, but it will be used in a uh, cutscene here. Well, sort of. And she wants us to kill her. And well, the chainsaw killed her. She seems happy that it happened, though, so, I mean, there, there is that. But uh, overcome with the, uh, the trauma, grief of what had just taken place, our first kill, if you will, uh, our character just kind of passes out for a little bit here. And again, we're going to go ahead and speed the uh, jump ahead a little bit coming up here as this fades out. After uh, Agent 47 comes to help us out. And uh, we're going to awaken in this room with uh, another one of the ghosts here. Call them ghosts. They may not all necessarily be ghosts, but uh, regardless. So after we leave that room, we need to get our perfume back from her. Mother's perfume, that is. And uh, we're going to run down there and grab the key from the rats. It ends up we need the perfume anyway if we want to progress. Because as shown here... She used some of the perfume and it scared off the rat. And so obviously we'll need to spray some of the perfume to keep those rats from uh, killing us before we make it to the end of the room. So where did she hide it? Right behind this uh, dress. Let's cut that open. And there's the perfume. And you make sure you get out of here. This is a dangerous room if you're not careful. Yeah, just get out of there as quickly as possible because that all will cut you up. Uh, after a brief moment of holding it, the doll stops. We can come down here. We're going to use the perfume now. Yeah, you cannot use it in the next room. You have to use it here. And the rats will leave us alone, though. Let's head on down here, safe and sound. And uh, we're going to go through the door on the uh, meter right here. Now, as we walk here, you'll see that gate closed. Make sure you go over there and open that gate again. Very important, because now this killer doll is going to be after us. And we're going to have to do some maneuvering to get around it. This movement here is very tricky. 
you know, you because you don't have a lot of time if you mess up. If you miss that opening, I, you're you know, if you're playing on controller, your thumb rolls off the D-pad or anything like that. That doll could catch you, so let's be careful. Did it go ahead and sleep in the coffin for a little bit until it opens up the secret stairwell? Then we're going to run over here after taking the path to get the herbicide and use it on the uh, gate here, which will open it up. Obviously, that's going to lure the doll, but we're going to go back through the secret passage here and pull this uh, this uh, shelf in front. That's going to block her. And then we just come over here, lock the gate on the other side and bam, you escape just like that. So we're going to head on through this next doorway, try to go through this door and realize that we can't. So now we're going to be tasked with getting rid of this doll. That one sitting in the chair as it's uh, has some kind of magic uh, binding on the door there that keep us from going in. I don't know. We need to get rid of it, though. That's what I do know. <laughs> yes, the mission dispose of the creepy doll. Love the wording there. <laughs> and so now we're just going to keep following along here. They kind of just lead us to what we have to do next. And the poor cat there. And across the corridor here, you'll notice ravens around. Those are save points if you're at all you know, worried about anything or need to stop or anything like that. So wait for the uh, first pass of both of the dolls here and you can just run through the red light. Just wait for this one. There's a hide spot right there. Pretty straightforward stealth mechanics here, though, or if you want to call them mechanics, really, it's just not getting seen. You can go to that one immediately, though, and then you want to rush this one because you can get through in one cycle this way. Now, if you were going for the best ending or 100 percent, you would want to go down at that path. There's a gem down there, but thankfully we don't have to worry about that here. After what could only be some scalpel cause slashes take place, which we're going to take now. Girl that was leading us is uh, unfortunately no more. We're going to head into this next room and uh, find a shining key, which unfortunately this dog is going to steal. So you probably use your imagination to figure out what a scalpel plus a dog is going to lead to here. I apologize in advance. But um, we're going to run to this uh, ladder. All right, this is actually a little weird. A little bit more to this than you may think. So first, we're going to move the plank, but you're still not finished yet. Make sure you move the sandbags, too, because then, you, you you know, you won't have the weight to hold her up and you'll fall and have to redo it. So the trick here is wait until she turns and starts moving once. After she moves once, you will get her. If you do it at a different time, even though it can actually land on top of her, it won't count. I actually lost a run earlier in this uh, night of attempts for that exact reason. So run past the door, grab the puzzle piece, then we're going to run in here. Now, an interesting thing is use the puzzle piece, but you can skip this part. Go ahead and hit yes there. That's perfectly OK for the speed run. It's, the puzzle is just there for your enjoyment. So we're going to run up to this pot, hit leave it be, and then take the pot. Do not try to uproot it. Yeah, just leave it be and take the pot. And we're going to come in here. We're going to use the pot under this uh, claw machine here and run. You need to be very quick here. Get into this room. That timer is uh, no joke. It will. Uh, these things are very loud. That's that's how we basically take out the dog. <laughs> See it just plop over there. Yeah, you need to uh, need to get into Somewhere safe, as it says there. Go ahead and run into the dog here. We're going to use the scalpel on it to retrieve the incinerator key. And believe it or not, the game is almost finished. We're on the home stretch just about here. Again, it's a fun little speed run. It's not the most, you know, overwhelming challenge of a run or anything like that. It's a great, uh, great one if you just want to kind of throw a new game in for 
the heck of it. Uh, highly recommend. So we're going to come back to the room where we retrieved the scalpel. And that's where the incinerator is. Use the incinerator key. And what I did here was I would start mashing the menu button. It would skip the dialogue as well. So that way I knew exactly when I could throw the or uh, use the evil doll. Yep, and then there you go. Just keep mashing here and. Yep, she's going to get uh, thrown into the fires of Mount Doom and we can head on out. We can head back to that door that was sealed before. And another, again, go ahead and skip this part. It gives you the prompt to feel free to. You don't have to go through the stealth section again. Big, big credit to the game for allowing that. So again, the evil doll will still be uh, trapped back there. Don't have to worry about her, though. And here we are at the door. This will now be opened. Another green door, green doll, excuse me, comes out here. But, uh, and just mash past it. You don't have to worry about anything, really. Uh, just as a heads up, in case I... It isn't clear when it happens. When the, uh, bad end one pops up on the screen... That is when you would want to stop your timer if you're aiming to speedrun this, by the way. So, uh, we're getting pretty close to that here. We just got to mash past some more dialogue from Agent 47 and then enter this vortex here. Don't hit no, hit yes. Don't be a scrub like me. And really, it's just dialogue here uh, from here on. Now, for the bad ending, though, you will want to pick the top ending. So thankfully, the good, uh, with this situation, the uh, top option here that you want to take is already highlighted. So you just want to mash through and um, yeah, you'll get it that way. Yep, just keep mashing, just keep mashing. Again, the, and the story too, I, I kind of made a little light of it, perhaps. Um, the story's not bad in this game. I, uh, I would recommend at least playing the game again. No, I'm not a uh, sponsor by them or anything, I just do like this game. <laughs> I like little games like this that don't get the attention of a you know, Resident Evil or Silent Hill or something like that. <laughs> I do love those games, too. Don't get me wrong, but it's just yeah, it's nice to see some other stuff, too. But yeah, so Grant Mom's Wish, as you saw there. We're not completely finished yet, though. There is a little bit we'll have left. And again, this isn't the worst thing in the world because, as we've mentioned throughout, our father, her father, is not exactly the best of individuals. We're going to run through here. We're going to open up this gate here. And then we will find Maria. who, to no surprise, was indeed having an affair with the father. There's moments of a lot more development for her throughout the uh, good ending and everything, but, uh, yeah, you find out a little bit more information and everything, but, you know, this is just a speed run. And so after a bit of grieving here, though, Maria's going to come over here. And wham, knocks us out. Mm -mm -mm. So where does that leave us? It uh, leaves us at the table. And Maria's going to come back into the lab. And she intends to finish the father's work. And 
and there you go with the i love you you know it's coming up and there it is that's where you want to hit your split for bad end one all right well i hope you enjoyed the video this was a lot of fun to make we'll see you in the next one have a great day